morning and welcome to our daily devotions here in Don Baptist Church. A few days ago, I was going through uh, my reading of the Word of God. And one thing hit me about my reasons to continue. I look back and I felt so discouraged about myself because I don't get to do a lot of the things that I have been doing before the pandemic. Many of those things, I know I do them for the Lord, to serve God. And it is discouraging many times to be deprived of the things that we love to do for the Lord. But this morning, let me encourage each one of us on how God intends us, for us, to continue, not just surviving through the hard times of life, but to endure unto successful harvest of what we do for the Lord. Now, don't get me wrong. The Lord is a rewarder of those who seek Him. The Lord is a rewarder of those who are faithful. The Lord is a rewarder of those who put their trust in Him. And I hope that encourages us as we serve the Lord. That our God is a rewarder. Now, the Word of God would also tell us that there is this condition for us to endure the hard times. There's this condition. And God painted it in Galatians 6, chapter 9, in this beautiful picture of planting and harvesting. And it says here, let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Now, many people would normally feel discouraged if they do not see the purpose of why they are doing some things. And even more people are discouraged when they do not see the reasons, the purposes of why they are going through hard times. Not only doing something, but going through hard times. Now, the Lord understands our frame as human beings, that we tend to be discouraged if we are purposeless. And we tend to be discouraged when we don't see any reason for going through the hard times. And so it gave us this amazing verse, amazing verse for the believers during this time who are going through hard times, not just Externally, maybe because of persecution, because of living in a society that is anti-Christian. But if you are aware of the situation in Galatia, the church here is also going through problems inside the church. And so here, the Apostle Paul is encouraging the believers to not be weary in doing the right thing. For in the right season, we shall reap, they shall reap, if we faint not. Now, how do we endure the hard times as believers? One, more than any other people in the whole world, believers have the greatest of hopes. We have the greatest of hopes and purposes. We have the best endings to look forward to. Because our ending is not just in this life, but for eternity. That, for me, is one of the most important reasons to endure the hard times. But here it also says that we should also start right. Believers can endure the hard times if they have started rightly. In doing good, in well doing. Now, here in my background, 
is our rice field ready for harvest? And you know what rewards a farmer most is to see that the harvest not only equals the effort he puts in, but exceeds the efforts he has placed in. But which farmer would look forward to a great harvest when he has been lazy, when he has been haphazard, when he has been careless in planting his crops? The same is true with us believers. We do look forward to a great harvest of how God will reward us through our endurance in the hard times. But the fact is, it will always be a daily walk with God. The truth is, we have not really been to the awarding ceremony yet. It will come where God will reward everything in his standard. And so until that time comes, we look to the daily cycles of our lives and look at it as opportunities to do right. As believers, we are expected by God the Father through Christ in us to bear fruit daily. And here it says, you have to start right. We should not be weary in well-doing. We should not be tired in starting each day right. Even if it is hard. Now, to wake up in the morning and recognize God as the Lord and Savior of your life, to submit your plans for the day to him, to submit to his word by meditating on it and by talking to him. It is starting now, every day. And many times it is discouraging. It is meaningless. But here it says, do not be weary. Just start crying every day. Second, not only that, there is this timing. There is a promise of the right season. Not every day that we face the hard times of life, that it will be like that forever. The word of God says, time will come that it will be harvest. And it says here in due season, we shall reap. There is a promise of harvest to those who start right. Now, it is hard when you go through the problems of life. I heard of uh, believers who not only had COVID, but they lost a loved one. They got sick and their loved ones as well at the same time. And at the same time, they lost their job. They're having a hard time getting by the needs of the day. And then they're sick, and then somebody died. You cannot start to imagine how hard it is when you are there. But isn't it amazing that God saw it ahead of time? And he says, it will come, but please don't be weary. Don't be weary in still doing what is right, when it is right. Why? Because you are looking forward to a harvest, to a rewarding ceremony. Not from the temporary rewards of this life, but from the greatest rewarder there is, God himself. So we have to start right. We have to anticipate, expect, without a doubt, that there is a harvest coming. There is a rewarding ceremony coming. Thirdly, that we faint not. We faint not. We can endure the hard times if we start right every time. We can endure the hard times if we 
always anticipate a rewarding ceremony not of temporary things but of eternal things from God. And lastly, that if we faint now. Is it possible that we lose the reward? Definitely. The word of God would tell us there is a time when many will lose the reward and will suffer the loss. That's why it promised this reward with a condition to faint not. And this completes the endurance during the hard times. Now, how do we faint not? How do we faint now? Now, you see, fainting is, we, we, we get tired, you know, that's normal for uh, limited creations. But here, fainting is not more of a physical limitation. Because as mortal beings, we will faint to the point of death physically. We have so much limitations physically. Emotionally, we also go through ups and downs. But here, fainting, fainting is not something that is just physical nor emotional. Here, fainting, fainting is an act of the will. It's a resolve. In fact, the word of God would tell us how to not faint. It says, looking unto Jesus. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. To set your affections or to set your eyes on the things above. Now, you see, when you are told to look, it does not require so much intellectual, you know, prowess. You don't need to be super intelligent to look. You don't need to be very talented to look. You don't need to be very gifted or able to look. Any person, even a child, can look. So here we are called to not faint. And to not faint, we have to set our eyes to look for, to look for Christ. In his word, to look for Christ in others, to look for Christ in the things that we do in public and in private, and even to look for Christ through the hard times that are happening. And to look for Christ is to simply just commune with Christ. Lord, what are you trying to tell me because of these hard times? Lord, what are you trying to change in me? Lord, what are you trying to show me of who you are in your word? Now, this journey of looking is actually the equal journey of not fainting. You see, this is not a complicated task because we are not called here to endure on our own strength. We are not called here to look at our experiences, to look at our capacities. We are not called here to depend on ourselves. We are called here to look to the one who is eternal, to depend on the one who is dependable, who will never leave us nor forsake us, to look to the one who is enduring, to look to the one who died but rose again. To look to the one who was tempted and yet overcame. To look to the one who is coming back again and restore everything that is wrong in this life back to perfection. You see, to look to Christ is a call to each believer. To look to Christ, not just a one-time Savior of our souls, but to look to Him every day. If you are here and you think it is complicated to endure the hard times, 
we are complicated beings. We are limited. Our situations are complicated, but we are called to faith not by looking unto Christ. For He is enduring. He is immense and yet He is simple. He made things simple for us. Look to the Savior that you have accepted. Look to the Lord that you promised to serve daily. And if you are here and you don't know what I'm talking about, maybe how to look to Christ, you cannot look to Christ unless you have looked to Him first as your Lord and Savior. The Word of God says, Just as the serpent was raised in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. And when he is lifted up, he will draw all men unto himself. It talks about Christ being lifted up on the cross to die for the sins of men. My sins, your sins. And we have to look to him as our Savior. He is our Savior. And he is the one who will endure. And he said, don't faint. Yes. You can rest. Yes, you are limited. Yes, you can be discouraged. Yes, you can fail. But I don't fail. I can never be discouraged. I can never be stopping and giving up. Look to me and endure the hard times. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for how you would draw us to you through your word. We don't want to be focused on our own selves. We want to look up to you. And we thank you that your word indeed feeds our souls to look to the Christ who is able to endure the hardest times so that we too can faint not. In Christ's name, amen. Mm-hmm.